talking about political will, let's mm. use Nigeria for as a case study. If Nigerian government say, oh, we're ready to support you with youth of 100,000 youth and support you with the financial know-how, can you manage this? Well, yes, uh, I, I have to tell you, at uh, this point in time, there is a proposal on a desk of the Nigerian government funded by ADB, which is to be approved uh, by uh, the uh, government of Nigeria of training per state 1,000 of these graduates, 37,000 of them, uh, with um, an incubation period for teach them between three months and six months. And after that, uh, they start up their own business. And the idea is to have uh, this, each of those entrepreneurs starting a small company. It could be cassava, it could be soybean, it could be poultry with the idea of employing each of them, 10 other younger people. So if uh, you have a very good incubation period, a very good tra training, uh, you train the trainers, I think this certainly, and uh, having uh, institutions that are serious, really, basically uh, mentoring and monitoring the young people, why should we not have? Why? If 12 young people in Imo, they can show that Imo can produce tomatoes and onion instead of uh, and marketing it. So I'm really optimistic about what we can do in Africa and so on. But uh, this uh, conversation, we have uh, to take it and try to motivate uh, the policy makers because they have to see some of these things. Now, apart from Nigeria, of mm. course, which we are seeing the success story yeah. already that you have said, mm. which other country have you introduced this agripreneur to that you can talk about success story right now, or are they just about to come to be? Oh, no. Well, uh, I think some uh, countries are making even more progress than Nigeria. Uh, you, you take, for example, uh, Sudan. I said I'm going to Sudan. Sudan I went to ADB. They saw the need of uh, this program. They came here to Nigeria. He had IT to learn. And uh, they executed it faster than Nigeria because they saw the advantage of it. And some of the young entrepreneurs who are here are going to Sudan to teach those young people in Sudan. Côte d'Ivoire, Madagascar. So let me give you an example of my own country. As uh, this program, when I started it, I took these young people from here, went with them to DRC, Chibola for fish, uh, Molayo for cassava, and they started working with the young people from DRC. And today, the, the young people in Kavu DRC, they are making $4,000 per day of uh, high cassava flour which they are exporting, or the technology they learn from here. So, it's um, again, this is the political will every time. Uh, I keep insisting on that because technically and uh, strategically, this is a proven concept. Or otherwise, uh, the world, uh, ADB won't put uh, around $1 billion for this uh, program. Now, how do you feel that a concept? Yeah from Africa, by Africa, is actually what is transforming African youth. How do you feel it's coming from you? Uh, How do well, you feel? I, I have to say, um, um, uh, yeah, probably two things. Um, I don't take this as uh, a personal um, trophy, uh, as uh, I would say. I believe that some of us have been uh, privileged to be trained. Uh, it's uh, a question of paying back to what you receive from uh, the so 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 society. That's one. And for Nigeria, um, so particular, I would say emotional, because I spend uh, almost all my career in this country. Uh, so Nigeria has given me a lot. And my family, so 
working with uh, young uh, Nigerian like them, uh, really, uh, for me, it gave me a lot of satisfaction and so on. With that, and you re realize that, okay, I've been in Korea, I trained a lot of PhD, uh, some are directors and so on, and uh, some occupy very good position, Nigerians, uh, black girls, other Africans. And I'm not talking about those, but I'm talking about these young people. It's not because I pity them, because they don't have a job, but because this is the future. Now, my, my question is, this is, this is an rare innovation that yes. we always see this kind of innovation coming from the Western world. Yes. And this is actually coming from Africa, by an African, for Africa. How do you feel? You are the one being used as an instrument yes. for, 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 to actually see African youths you know, embrace agriculture. And it's working. How do you feel? Well, well it's a sense of uh, satisfaction uh, because, uh, yes, occupying, uh, let me tell you, uh, occupying this position on this table there, I used to come in this office when, my, when, my former, uh, when I was a scientist here or a student. I've known three director generals were my boss. It was even difficult for me to approach them because when you came to this office, you had this kind of fear. And during that period, uh, myself and Adesina, you can see him over there, we were among the only few scientists, two program leaders among 24 European Americans. And uh, you could sense in all the meetings that we were not listened to. Even when you had ideas, sometimes they won't be considered at all. So um, being in this position, now I know the reality, certainly, of uh, this continent, because I live those realities and so on. And uh, knowing those reality, now I have the freedom to bring solutions uh, to those reality without being filtered. So I believe that um, uh, this opportunity of uh, having an Africa for me is not a job uh, where I'm sitting here just because I have to collect my salary. My predecessor probably that was the case. But for me, it's really a mission. It is a mission to try to see that this continent uh, finally. Um, and a lot of people uh, during uh, the anniversary here, uh, when they were coming, they could not imagine that it was an African who was leading the center because it's the way it's really managed and so on. So, really, there is no big deal of us leading centers like this, once you have discipline and you know, what you're going to do. is mostly focused on youth, mm -hmm. the empowerment of youth in agriculture. Does mm -hmm. IIT have any plan for the older generation or the rural farmers that are actually, in, they've been involved in, in agriculture for a very long time? 
does the organization have any plan for this older generation or the rural farmers that are actually involved in it and they've been doing it for years? Uh, as a matter of fact, for the last past um, 50 years, I would say that has been our um, focus. And uh, one of the things I did um, uh, as well to come with this program it was a very bold program because even the board, my board of trustees, they were saying, no, we're not supposed to do that, and so on, leave it to education, and so on. But I realized that if we don't do this, irrespective of what you do in terms of technologies and so on, it's not going to go nowhere if uh, our young people like you do not change the mindset and so on. Uh, the problem is that when my predecessor were doing that, they were doing that like in a social activity. Mm -hmm. They go, they do little, like anthropology. You do, you study uh, a community. I went to Fashola. Yeah, if you know. I, I, I'm even, Fashola, I'm, I'm a small chief there. Because I did my PhD there and I have a community. You sit with them. And the time you start doing, pity them because you were teaching them that there is no progress. Uh, if there is, and we needed to change the cycle completely. Completely. And uh, that's how Africa is going to develop. We can find some, some other things for the old generation, the old people to do. In terms of social, some programs, the cooperative of A, B, C, D. But production, production we have to take it to the level where it's becoming a business. It means that you have to make analysis. It. it has to be people who understand that I'm going to make money from this. When my market is there. I have to all kinds of things. You see the young people can do. I, I think um, you know, that's... Um, and uh, yes, I was in Ocean State. Um, I think two weeks ago I was talking with the governor. For two years we've been discussing. And he kept telling me that well, I'm going to give you my extension workers. We are employed. Those people, they don't have any motivation whatsoever. If they spend two months, they are not uh, paid. They have even forgotten, even I'll say, to joke, to write, even. Um, yeah, oh, well, so they can't do extension anymore. And I told him and um, the only, hey, let's turn all the young people of um, uh, Oshun. And uh, yes, they will do cocoa, they will do cassava, they will do all kinds of things and so on. So we have to shift that mindset of agriculture. In Asia, that's what they did. In China, it's the same thing and so on. It's not going to be different in Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finally, finally, yeah. African youth are listening to you. Your yeah. advice for them? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, the advice is just the young use of today, believe in Africa and believe in you. Because it's not a slogan to say the future belongs to you. Um, it's coming from Imo, where Siva, she's an el electrical engineer. She's managing the largest greenhouse. When we trained her here, the greenhouse uh, was uh, 200 square meters. And uh, she said it was too much. Today she's managing a greenhouse with 25 times more than that. She's producing tomato in, in she's selling, selling, and she's saying that greenhouse, which was 25 times more what was she's trained, is becoming too small for her. And she wants more and more because she has seen the benefits of that. She's called her sister, young sister, to come and help her eh, in turn. So there is a lot of future in this, and I do believe, as in fact, I directed my son to go into a business as well. So as to tell you how strongly I believe. So he's doing that in DRC. And uh, he's studied. Uh, basically, hospitality and um, uh, tourism. Uh, he's forgotten that. He's in good business. <laughs> okay, thank you, you very much, much for your yeah. time. We are so thank you. To... I had to run away and hide. Something happened in the middle of the night. 
If I came inside without a sound, suddenly my life was turning upside down. All that I could feel was pain, and strangers came and took my soul away. Like a deadly hurricane, I know my life will never be the same.